We're on track this year. We sold trucks last year. We're on track to sell a lot more trucks this year. I won't give the exact number, but our revenue should be up 15 to 20 times this year over last year. So we are becoming a real truck company as we speak. Behind the curtain here is our W56. Good morning, everybody. It's me, Stock Picks by Tim, and I want to get into Workhorse. I'm going to feature the video, the rest of the video that you just saw a part of here. We also have an upcoming event going on. I'm going to touch on that, and I'm also going to touch on the chart and show you what's been going on there for Workhorse. And if you like these videos and you don't mind, consider hitting the like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, check out the links down below. I'll also leave you with a discount for TurboTax if you still need to do your taxes. And everything I go over will be down below in a link for you, whether it's the Workhorse video or details on this upcoming event. So let's look into all this and let's roll the rest of that Workhorse clip. It's been an interesting, challenging 18 months here at Workhorse. As many are finding out in the industry, going from an EV startup to a real commercial truck company is not easy. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of people, it takes a lot of suppliers to get things done. And some have already found out it's a tough road. Some have not made the journey already, they've already failed. And I expect there'll be more casualties in 22 and 23 and 24 as people run out of money. At Workhorse, we have the people. We doubled our engineering team in the last 12 months. We built a technical center. We moved into new headquarters with prototype equipment. We have a new fact, we have a rebuilt our factory. We doubled the size of our factory. We have a test track. We've done all the work. Most importantly, we have the capital from a financial standpoint to make the journey from start to real production. Started the year with $100 million of cash. We have access to another $175 million of cash to fund the company. Not every EV startup company can say they can do that, okay? So we're on track this year. We sold trucks last year. We're on track to sell a lot more trucks this year. I won't give the exact number, but our revenue should be up 15 to 20 times this year over last year. So we are becoming a real truck company as we speak, okay? Behind the curtain here is our W56. We talked about that a year ago. It's the cornerstone of our three-year product roadmap to deliver a robust work truck that meets the needs of our customers. We've, uh, we've gone out and benchmarked our competitors. We've talked to all of our key fleets. We understand their demands. We also went out and bought our own fleet for FedEx. We run a route every single day since last July, 11 trucks through the peak season. We've run the trucks late at night, Saturdays and Sundays deliver packages. And our engineers have done a hell of a job taking that information from the drivers, from our customers, from our competitors and designing the W56. I'm not gonna go into all the details, I'll let Dave do that. But this truck you hear, it can meet the demands, 15 year to 20 year life. It can meet the rugged payload requirements. It can travel 150 mile range. This truck has the tightest turning radius in the industry. It's got the best visibility for drivers, and it's got a robust, it's carry 10,000 pounds, okay? So without further ado, well, I should say this. I'm super proud as a guy who was born in Lafayette, Indiana, who resides in Evansville, Indiana, to be in Indiana in the heartland of America, introducing a truck that's gonna be built in a plant that was left to die for over 20 years, where 800 people lost their jobs and we're gonna build that plant back in the city of Union City and create 500, 600 jobs in America to build American-made trucks for American-made customers. So let's pull back the curtain. Here's the W56. We're proud to introduce it. So. A lot of our engineers here, they, they should be damn proud of it. We've got our program managers here, we got suppliers here. Without the suppliers, without the engineers, without the program managers, without the sales team, we wouldn't have this truck. They've done a hell of a job in less than 12 months from start to finish. This is a truck that can meet the demands of the, of the field. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that video as much as I do. I'm definitely impressed with the look of the truck. It actually reminds me of um, an old truck my dad has, a Dodge Power Wagon. Maybe I'll show you guys a picture of it. I don't know. But I did want to go over this recent news here regarding the Roth conference. And this is going to be from March 12th to 14th. And essentially at this conference, Workhorse Management will be holding one-on-one -on -one meetings with institutional investors and analysts throughout the conference. And this conference pretty much consists of one-on-one -on -one small group meetings, company presentations, analyst-selected fireside chats, and thematic industry panels 
From approximately 400 private and public companies in a variety of growth sectors, including business services, consumer health wellness, healthcare resources, oil, gas, metals, mining, technology, media, ag tech, and sustainability slash ESG. This is obviously a good thing for Workhorse because it gives exposure to institutional investors, to people that might not even be aware that Workhorse exists. So hopefully their meetings go well they're coming up. But I also want to look over the chart for you guys and just show you a couple of things to be aware of. Now in a previous Workhorse video, I did show you guys this pattern to look out for. It wasn't a perfect pattern, but it did kind of break it, try to pop back in, couldn't hold, and we are continuing downwards. The next level we need to be aware of is our low here that was established at the end of last year, end of 2022. This was right at about $1.40. This is one stock that hasn't maintained its May 11 low, and it's been in a very, very rough downtrend for quite a long time now. And one thing I did want to show you on the chart here is that we haven't had a bullish flip of the EMAs, the 50 crossing the 100 and 200, ever since back here in June of 2020. And what happened to the price? Well, it absolutely ballooned. It continued in a bullish momentum. The EMAs never really retraced each other until after this big drop on the decision that the USPS would not be using Workhorse. And this is a lagging indicator, so obviously it didn't time the top perfectly when to get out, but it did tell you when to get in, essentially. And ever since this bearish cross, it has been in a continued downtrend. And you'll see this whole entire time, despite these little pops along the way, uh, these EMAs never flipped. The 50 never flipped the 100, and especially never flipped the 200. And that is one thing that I'll definitely be looking for while also looking out for future catalysts like earnings and things of that nature. So unfortunately, just from a chart perspective, Workhorse still looks bearish, and it really is not all that far from its last all-time low of 140. And let me reiterate, that's not its all-time low, but that is its 52-week low. It has definitely been lower in, you know, 2019 and back, back even farther back. But, you know, recently we did hit a recent low and that's not a good sign and long-term investors might see that as a great buying opportunity it all depends on your strategy if you do in fact have a long-term mindset with workhorse then of course you know you want to buy those all-time lows you want to buy the stock at a steep discount if you can and that is only if you have high conviction in the company if you're simply looking for a swing trade i would personally wait i would wait till we get some bullish direction now one thing i wanted to show you guys is they do expect right around nine million dollars in revenue on the next quarter that's going to be reported in the future and that'll be about a 3x in revenue from where we are currently now this company obviously isn't profitable it is extremely high risk but it is a good thing to finally see that from here on out they should be seeing increasing revenue and as they said in the call they expect a 15 to 20x in sales from 2022 which puts them right around 75 to 100 million and in my eyes if you stuck around this far on workhorse if you're a bag holder from the 40s 30s 20s you probably should have sold in 2022, took the loss and found a better entry point down the road. But if you're still holding after all this time, why sell now? Why sell now after we've been seeing actual progress made with this company? They've made a lot of changes. They scrapped the C-1000s, which was part of the old workhorse. They seem to be making a lot of progress with drones. And I'll leave you guys the earnings call down below so you know I'm not blowing smoke. But they are clearly, to me, making progress. They have actually sold some vehicles so far. They have a good amount of commercial sales experience, so that's going to be very useful moving forwards as they look for good buyers, you know, larger scale buyers. And I gotta say, the new workhorse van actually looks very, very attractive to me and it brings back a really nice retro vibe and like i said it looks like a truck that i plan on hopefully working on with my dad down the road one day when i have the time but what do you guys think about workhorse lately how are you feeling about the company in general do you think things are actually looking better do you think things are looking worse and also what do you think about this new truck compared to the c1000 i definitely think it's more attractive i did like the c1000 but you can see with its boxy nature it looks less agile it has less you know viewing angles for a driver and this w56 definitely seems like a game changer definitely looks you know really good but let me know your thoughts down below thanks as always and i'll see you in a little bit